channel. It's nice to see you here. Today we're going to talk about seven things you should do to have successful travel photos. Whether you're traveling around the world or just to your own local sites, you want to capture the culture and the emotion and the spirit of the place that you're visiting so that you have great memories to look back on. We recently rode our bikes around Vancouver's gorgeous Stanley Park. It's in the Coast Salish area of British Columbia and it's on the traditional land of the Squamish and Musqueam nations. Stanley Park is right in Vancouver's downtown, so it's really, really easy to get to. It's bigger than New York Central Park and if you know Richmond Park in London, it's about half the size of that, so really, really big. is to plan ahead. Before you go, make sure you have an idea of what you want to see and where you want to stop and where you think the best vantage points are going to be for taking photos. So use Instagram, use Google Maps, use tourist guides to find places where other people have found unique and interesting pictures of great scenes. That'll help you to get a more unique picture. So the next tip is about gear. Travel light. When you're traveling the world or traveling your backyard, you don't want to be bogged down with too much stuff. Keep it simple. Keep your gear light so that you can get those shots that you really want. I use a 24 to 200 lens on my camera. The quality of it is wonderful. I'm really in love with uh, this lens. That 24 to 200 allows me to zoom in and catch those fleeting moments when they're happening too quickly. I don't have to go out and change my lenses. I can just zoom and get the shot that I want. In 24, I can do a reasonably good wide angle. 200, I can zoom enough, and that's good. So try to go light on your gear. stories. When you're taking photos, try not to get stuck just taking landscape photos. Try to take a variety so that you can give a sense of the whole picture, the whole story of what you experienced while you were on your trip. Take those grand landscapes but also focus on the people and the food and the wildlife and everything else that you're seeing and feeling as you're going through your trip.
all the colors. Some love. The fourth tip is about composition. Be ready to move your feet so that you can get the compositions that you want. Pay attention to all the rules that you've always learned. So look for those leading lines. Watch for the rule of thirds. Watch your edges and pay attention to the background elements and what they're doing for your image. Keep thinking about your foreground, your midground, and your background so that you get the composition that you want. When the garden won't stop giving back Honeysuckle fresh cut grass I could really use some stuff like that photography is to pay attention to the light. The best thing to do is to get up early and go out in the morning or in the evening because that's when you get that wonderful golden light or, or the blue hour. That's the best light. But if you can't do that, then you make do. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you're on a tour and you're driving past a site and you make do with what, what you've got. So the main thing to think about for light is to expose for the highlights. Make sure that you don't blow out any of those highlights. The shadows you can bring up in post, but don't blow out your highlights. So expose for the light. Could you including people, that's a decision you have to make. Sometimes when you include people in the pictures, it helps to tell the story just a little bit more. It shows part of the culture and it can even give scale to some of those great landscape shots to have those people included. I generally prefer to give people as much anonymity as I can. People like their privacy and I want to respect that. If the shot you're taking clearly shows somebody's face, then it's always best to go and ask their permission. 
I've generally found that people are quite happy to have their picture taken and they'll say yes if you ask them. If they say no, then that's okay too and you just need to respect their wishes. The key thing is to be courteous. is probably the most important tip and that is to enjoy yourself. Don't spend so much time looking in the viewfinder that you miss the, seeing the view. Don't forget to enjoy the places and the people that you're sharing this experience with. That's the most precious part. today. Hope you enjoyed this quick trip around Stanley Park. If you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel and you'll see more of the content. Cheers! See you next time!